Hello everyone, welcome back to the Wooden Metal Shop. Today I'm going to be making a hinged pen box for this pen that I made last week. This is a western style antique pewter twist pen. If you haven't seen that video, I will post a link up above here, so go check that out. But before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and go and check out all my social media links. I have them all posted below. So let's get on with this. Before we start with the box, I need to know what the size of the pen is in the length and the width of it. To make this pen box, I'm going to be using a piece of reclaimed birch. I cut off a piece a little bit bigger than what I needed on my miter saw. Then I put it on my jointer and I flattened the bottom and one side until it was square. Then I ran it through my thickness planer until I achieved the thickness that I wanted. Now I'm going to run it through the table saw and cut off two pieces a little bit thicker than what I need for the top and bottom of the box. When I run this through the table saw I'm going to start with a shallow cut and cut on both sides and then I'm going to slowly raise the blade up but I'm not going to cut all the way through. And I'm going to finish the cut on the bandsaw. And take the thick piece and run it through the thickness planer until I cleaned off the top. Now I'm taking the thick piece and I'm cutting it on the table saw to match the other piece. Now I'm taking both pieces and running them through the thickness planer to the final thickness. Now that I have both pieces cut and they're both the same thickness, I've labeled them top and bottom and now I'm going to put them on my X-Carve CNC and design the rest of the pen box in easel. I designed the pen case in easel. Now I'm not going to show you step by step or the measurements for the pen case. This is how I designed it. You might want to design yours a little bit differently, but all I'm going to do is show you what each cut is and the reason why I made the cuts. First I started with the outside dimensions of the box. Then I set the dimension for the area for the pen to sit in. Next I made an offset around where the pen is going to sit. This is where the felt is going to actually lay on top and be offset underneath the next part which is an inlay. Then I took the dimensions of the hinge and set that in here on the edge of the box. And then I had to play with the edit points in order to get a straight line instead of an oval. Now with the top piece I put it on the wasteboard upside down and because I've put the stop blocks there, I can just set this board right back into the same place and it's aligned the same way as the previous piece. Now I'm going to start cutting out the inlay portion of the pen box. I have my window open in easel for the pen box. And first you want to select File, New to open a new window. Go back to the pen box. Select the area where the inlay is going to sit and either go edit, 
copy or control C for copy. Go to your new window, edit and paste. Select outside for the cut and cut all the way through with no tabs. Make sure you also set the depth of the wood and I'm going to set it to 0.2 of an inch, a little bit thicker than what the wood actually is. Go back to the pen box, select the area where the pen is going to sit, select edit copy, go to the new window, edit, paste, select inside and no tabs. My depth is already set and the position is in the same position as the pen box is so you don't have to make any sort of an adjustment there. And now you're ready to cut. My next step is to set the hinges in place, make sure they fit properly, and do any sort of adjustment if I need to. And for the area where the inlay sits, all I need to do is take some sandpaper, clean off the area where there's any sort of splinters, just so that the inlay can sit in there properly. And for the walnut inlay, all I need to do is sand the edges until it has a nice fit in the pen case. And I made sure to label the walnut inlay top and bottom so I don't mix them up. The walnut inlay was just slightly raised when I put it in the case. I removed it, used 150 grit and 220 grit and sanded the walnut until it was smooth. Put it back in the case, felt around the edges and made sure there was no more raised areas. I used my trim router to round over the outside edge of the pen case. I started with a quarter inch round over bit, then decided that wasn't quite the look I wanted, so I ended up using a half inch round over bit. I stuck both halves of the case together with double sided tape, then put it on my bench sander and sanded the side of the case until it was smooth and flat. And then I moved on with a orbital sander and then I'm going to finish off with hand sanding up to 320 grit. I covered the outside area where I want to put the felt and the outside of the case. Then I used spray adhesive on the inside where I'm going to put the felt. I let the spray adhesive dry for about 15-20 minutes until it gets really tacky and then I applied the felt. And with a sharp razor blade, just cut off the excess felt. Then I applied masking tape to the inside of the pen case to prevent any overspray from the finish. I sprayed on two coats of shellac, and this will seal the wood and the end grain before I put on any sort of finish. I also masked the back and the sides of the inlay. This will prevent any overspray from getting on the back to prevent any problems with the glue up. The shellac is going to raise the grain of the wood. All you need to do is take some ultra fine steel wool and give it a very light sanding. I then sprayed on several coats of clear acrylic finish. And because I used steel wool when I sealed the wood, there was no need to wet sand in between coats of the clear finish. After I removed all of the tape from the case, I then set the hinges in place, marked the centers of the holes, and then pre-drilled the holes for the very fine screws. I then used some epoxy resin and applied it to the back side of the inlay. I then set the inlay into the case, and because it's a tight fit, there's no need for clamping. I used a number one by three eighths screw on the hinges. They're really fine, and you got to be really careful with them when you're turning them in, you do not want to over tighten them because you can break the heads off. Also, you want to make sure your screwdriver is sitting on the screw properly 
because if it moves off, it will wreck the slot of the screw and you're not going to be able to either turn it in or turn it out. So there it is, completely finished. Turned out really nice. There's the pen inside. Pen fits just perfectly in there. I like the way the walnut contrasts with the birch and shows off the pen. And that cloth protects the pen. The hinge only opens up to about 95 degrees and stops. It's not a full open hinge. So it turned out really great. If you are interested in this pen or case, or any of the other items that I have made, you can find them on my Etsy store. I will have the link posted down below, so it's a great way of supporting my channel. So go check that out. Also another way to show some support for my channel is down below are links for my Amazon affiliate. So if you're interested, you can go and check those out as well. Also, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment or a question. I'd be glad to hear from you. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell for when I do another video. You'll be notified right away. Also, all my social media links are listed down below, so go check them out and follow me there. So, I hope you really enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you again. So, until next time, take care.